no, vegetarians would not eat them. <laughs> that's, that's the point. Is a vegetarian diet ethical? Star talk, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I was asked to respond to this and I thought I already had. I did a video talking about speciesism or responding to Neil deGrasse Tyson talking about speciesism. We basically eradicated smallpox, right? Well, what about the smallpox microbes, all right? How do they feel about this? Really one of the worst takes I've seen on veganism, speciesism. I remember someone being critical of the, the title I made, Neil deGrasse Tyson's Galaxy Brain Take on Speciesism, something like that. And someone was like, hey, not cool. But truly it was and is one of, if not the worst takes I have seen on animal sentience. So you will not kill an animal to eat it, but you will slaughter all manner of plant life. Clearly, this is not a stupid man. He is very intelligent. I'm sure he is far more intelligent than me when it comes to most things. But I think this is really not even an issue of stupidity. I think it's an issue of willful ignorance. I think he is ignorant on philosophy and ethics and sentience. He's choosing to be because it benefits him to do so. And he is not unique in this regard. Most people are like this. We don't want to know where our food comes from. We don't want to know how the animals are treated. The issue is most people ignore it. They don't lecture people on why vegetarianism or veganism is wrong, actually. And they aren't respected by many, many people as like an intellectual heavyweight and someone who is worth listening to. So yeah, stuff like this is a problem. And yes, I have already watched this. And unfortunately, it is just as bad, if not worse, if that's even possible than the other video on speciesism. This has 2.5 million views on Facebook. And it's just a snippet of the original. It's called Is There an Ethical Diet on StarTalk, which they don't actually answer that question, but okay. Ecologically conscious people will buy line caught tuna line caught tuna and you know why of course yeah because the net caught tuna uh, does a great deal of harm to uh, the cutest animal <laughs> that swims <laughs> and breathes air yeah none other than our reigning champion <laughs> Of a dolphin! Can I just say, his eyelashes are beautiful. I'm sorry, I know that has nothing to do with anything. And this also really has nothing to do with anything, but dolphins are not, I, they're not cute. I don't think they're cute at all. Possibly because I've seen that video. If you know, you already know what I'm talking about. <laughs> dolphins are gross and creepy. You buy line caught tuna, you don't kill the dolphins. And, but of right. course, when you buy line caught, line caught tuna, you're killing the tuna. <laughs> so so this is this is a speciesist decision you're making. Also pets, right? We value pets for companionship and we value cows and pigs and sheep and chickens as food. And then the most common would obviously be humans. We value human animals much more than we do other animals for irrational reasons is the important part there. There are rational reasons to value humans over other animals, to value cows over worms, but saying cows can be eaten because they're cows and they're not people, that's speciesism. Meatarians and vegetarians. And vegetarians, yes. Yeah. So that's uh, one of my favorite, because okay. I, I was reading that and I was like, Ooh, this this dude trying to get canceled. First, I thought he said this dude trying to get cancer. <laughs> Either one works, I guess. About the vegetarians, because you know how, you know, first of all, they're very, very moody because they're hungry. <laughs> they're hungry. Let's be honest. Eat a burger and let's talk, okay? We've never heard that we're angry because we're hungry and we just need a burger. Like, come on, man. That's so lame. These are all mm -hmm. jokes, okay? They're jokes. Okay. I'm, very ha I'm very happy for you to live that lifestyle. And quite frankly, you're uh, taking a great burden off of not only e the ecology, but uh, climate mitigation. That was very nice. Appreciated. Get better jokes. So eventually he's going to get to aliens and that's where it gets real goofy. But he starts by talking about mice and he gives this example. You care about animals. You don't want to kill animals. You have a mouse in your home, in your basement. So you use a humane trapping method to trap the mouse and then release it into the wild. And he argues, well, all you're doing is shortening that mouse's lifespan because there are lots of creatures that will eat mice. If you let it alone in your basement, it would live up to six years. Mm -hmm. So if you really cared about the life of that mouse, you would 
welcome it into your basement and have it bring all its friends while it's happening. First, don't do that, anyone, because mice do carry diseases. Their poop, their urine carries diseases. You don't want to be around that, particularly if you have children. You don't want your kids around a bunch of mice poop. And they poop everywhere. And I know because we deal with this very frequently. We just caught another mouse. I'm sorry. I know it's scary. Yeah. We gotcha. You can't live in our oven. You weirdo. And yes, the mouse would live longer in captivity. I mean, you would have to supply them food. The first one I think we ever had that we knew about actually died in our basement. That was a smell that we could not pinpoint for a while because it seemed like it was outside the house. He somehow got into like a, a bag. I think it had some styrofoam or something in it. And yeah, it was... Yeah. So there's no guarantee the mouse is going to live a long time just because they're inside. I think what he's referring to is in captivity, which would be like in some sort of cage or something with enough food and water. And then of course you can make the argument, well, living in a small enclosure, which they very likely will be in, you can't give a mouse enough space. You probably can't for optimal well-being. Point is, there's no guarantee that the mouse would live longer or be happier, more well-off in a basement. And again, diseases, it's really not safe to have just a bunch of animals running around in your house. If they're in your basement, they're very likely going to get into the rest of your house. We have had them in our children's room. They have gone actually into their dressers. That was fun. Finding mouse poop on their shirts. We do trap them and release them. We've done that three times now. We've been here for many years and we've only caught three of them. They are very good about <laughs> not getting caught. And you might say, well, that's pretty ridiculous. Like you're dealing with all this mouse shit. Like why not just poison them? Do you really want dead mice in your walls that you can't get and it smell? No. No, you don't. So just from a non-vegan perspective, catching them and releasing them far away, you need to take them. Like we actually take them across the river because they can find their way back. Even if you release them a couple miles away, like you really want to go pretty far. The glue traps and the snap traps, we have children, we have a cat. It's not safe having that stuff out. It's been a thing for us. Like we've closed up as many holes and foamed up as many areas as we can around the house and have removed food sources. Like there's no food at the kids' room. You know, we've done lots of things. Every few months or so, we'll find evidence of a of a mouse again. And just to be clear, so I don't sound like a saint, once one of them was in my kid's room, like I was like, f actually before that, I'm lying. <laughs> we had this huge couch that we didn't move except for once a year to clean because it was enormous. They were going behind the couch and actually in the couch under the cushions, there were so much mouse shit. And so I said to my partner, like, I don't know, we're poisoning. You, you either catch this thing within a week or poison. I don't fucking care. I'm done. And we didn't do that because... I didn't want to do that. It's terrible. And then there was poop in the kids' room and I was like, kill them. But we didn't because it's awful and we can do other things to get rid of them and to keep them out of rooms. We have found a way to keep them out of the kids' room. And so everything's good there. They're no longer going under the couch or in the cushions or anything like that, you know. Yeah, but that's not really what Neil is talking about. His point here is that it's an inconsistent philosophy that saying you don't want to kill animals and then you're saving these animals but actually shorten their lifespan well it's it's inconsistent it's not a fully thought through philosophy by just saving the life of the mouse instead of snapping its neck because you'd rather see it getting swallowed whole by an owl. So I do actually mostly agree with that because I think it, it gets into wild animal suffering, which most people, including vegans, don't seem to care about. And we don't like to view nature as like bad actually, in the sense that the lion eating the antelope, even though the lion is not being mean, they can't be mean. They're just doing what they have evolved to do. They have no sense of right and wrong. They're just eating because they need to eat. It's still awful that they are causing this suffering. It's it's awful that so much of nature is being eaten alive and getting an infection and dying or starving to death. It's, it's awful. Suffering is suffering. I don't think he's really saying that, but in that sense, I do think he's right. And I do think vegetarians and vegans don't typically care about that sort of thing. We just care about the things that we have a hand in. We care about factory farming because we can say, I'm not going to support it, right? Whereas with nature, with a wild animal suffering, like, what can you do? 
Anyway, there are uh, lots of people and even organizations focused on wild animal suffering, faunalytics. Uh, they're not really focused on it, but they do talk about it. Um, but anyway, I'll leave some resources in the description for those who are interested. Just saving the life of the mouse instead of snapping its neck because you'd rather see it getting swallowed whole by an owl. We should be concerned in, I think at this point, a kind of abstract sense about the owl eating the mouse. Like, it's terrible, right? And I think about that when we do release these mice, when my husband takes them across the water. Like, what's happening to them? How long are they even living after that point? No idea. He's always putting spiders outside. And I'm like, that's probably an inside spider, dude. Like, you, you probably just killed that thing. And then I'm also like, no, but put it outside because please, I don't want it near me. <laughs> and that's okay, because caring about animal suffering is not about perfection. If it were, you couldn't be here because our mere existence leads to the death of animals. I think later in the video, he talks about, you know, cutting down trees for houses and the trees are home to various creatures. Yeah, like our mere existence leads to the death of animals. Just walking around, you are stepping on who knows how many little bugs. But that's not what caring about animals, it's not what veganism or vegetarianism is about. They're about doing the best you can within your means, which I'll admit is subjective to some extent, right? I mean, someone could argue like, really, you can't just keep the little spiders in your house. There are no dangerous spiders in your area. I think we have a Western black widow, which you don't see those, right? They live like in crawl spaces and under rocks and shit. They're not dangerous, these spiders. Like really the vegan thing to do would be to just leave them alone. And I should be able to do that because it's irrational to be afraid of them, right? So it is subjective to various degrees. But no vegans or vegetarians are saying that caring about animals and not wanting to kill animals means there are no situations where that's not possible. Our food, of course, right? Eating plants leads to the death of various animals, just the planting and the harvesting and just the space that the food takes up, right? That has destroyed habitats of other animals. It's clearly not about perfection. It's just about reduction. Because you'd rather see it getting swallowed whole by an owl. Because the deal is, it's not really about the mouse. It's about you. Oh, oh, and how you feel. It's okay. how you feel. So I think that was just kind of unnecessary. I mean, I think in some cases, yes, I'm sure we can all think of vegetarians or vegans who act in ways that suggest it's more about a kind of virtue signaling thing or a label for them. But that is certainly not the majority. And it's just really shitty to suggest that we're all just really selfish, right? Most of this is coming from a, a defensive place, right? No one wants to admit that, hey, maybe vegans and vegetarians are right. And maybe the food you eat is pretty harmful. So instead it's, oh, well, no, they're just doing it to look good. And a lot of people who are releasing animals or even, you know, we've seen examples of people buying animals and then releasing them into not their habitat, saltwater creature and releasing it in fresh water. That has happened. Those people are just uneducated. They don't realize the various harms they're causing by doing things like that, right? They are trying to do good. I just don't think it's very nice. It's very charitable to paint them as just selfish. And now we get into the fun stuff, the alien plant talk. Imagine aliens that are, that uh, photosynthesize like plants. Right. Okay. So they're actually plant-based sentient life instead of meat-based meat -based. sentient life, okay? Right. What did partner call this? Fractal wrongness is what we're gonna see here. It's when a an argument is wrong on just so many levels. This is the first level. He said like one sentence and it's already so wrong. Plant-based sentient life. How would a creature like that even evolve? <laughs> How would something that uses photosynthesis have brain matter. Obviously a central nervous system is very intensive. How would a being get enough energy from sunlight alone? You would need quite a bit of surface area, right? Your, your body would, your skin. Um, this plant ecologist said humans would need a tennis court's worth of skin to meet our energy needs. Partner suggested huge wings maybe could facilitate that. He thinks it's more of a planetary issue than a biology or evolutionary issue. Like what kind of environment would facilitate a being like that? A photosynthesizing sentient being? What planet would provide the conditions necessary for that sort of life? He thought of a planet with a big enough, bright enough star close enough, obviously, to the planet. The planet rotates very slowly and the plant 
being evolves to follow the sun. They're constantly moving, so they're not like hanging back where it's hot as shit and just being incinerated. There couldn't be a lot of water, right? That would inhibit migration. So it'd probably be a desert planet. There'd be a lot of wind. How would they deal with that? There would be competitiveness there because you would have, you know, plants competing to get to the front of the line. So obviously having some sort of intelligence would be beneficial there. Maybe then they start forming groups because that's advantageous. So all of that is like, you know, I don't even think that could happen. Um, but even if it did, that's just sentience. That's not human level intelligence where they actually understand what they are and can travel to another planet. Oh yeah, I guess we should watch that part. Yeah, they end up um, coming to earth, these sentient plant beings. They thrive on sun lamps that right. are yeah. in their ship or on their host star, all right? So nobody ever kills anything. They just right. sort of they just absorb lay out light, in the sun and absorb the light. Mm. There it is. Oh, I gotta okay. tell you, today's sunlight is delicious, guys. You gotta get it. <laughs> Woo! He's so cringy. Like, he's cute cringy. His jokes are never good. And then Neil does this, like, fake over-the-top laughing. Like, it's the funniest thing he's ever heard. <laughs> Just the whole thing. The whole thing is cringe. I love it. If they come to Earth, like, what would they observe? So, the funny part is, they would see the meat eaters and wouldn't really fully understand them. Right. All right? There are these meat-based creatures killing other meat-based creatures for their survival, but they won't really care because they're only they're only going to care about their own brethren, which are the the plants. We have creatures who are intelligent enough that they can build spaceships and have actually found another planet with sentient life. We haven't done that. They found us, and they're coming to visit us. They figured out how to make that all work. And yet we're supposed to believe that they find some sort of camaraderie. They see non-sentient plants as brethren. Why would he even assume that, that, that they would see them as brethren and would be upset by us eating them? I mean, do we see all other meat-based creatures as brethren? No, that's the issue. It's much more likely they'd go, oh, yeah, they have those little invaluable, unmoving plants too. Ugh. It's much more likely they would see themselves as better than. They find a subset of humans who specifically target plants. This would kind of freak them out because these are their felt, these are their brethren. And so here they are cultivating plants to harvest them and eat them. And by the way, they'll feel sorry for our plants because our plants can't run away because they're sentient and they can like walk around. Because we feel so sorry for the cows that we hold in captivity, right? The cows that we milk until they're no longer useful and then slaughter. We feel so sorry for them, right? They watch humans, a particular subset of humans, walk up to a plant mm. and decapitate it, okay? This subset of humans, we call them vegetarians, specifically target the reproductive organs of the plants. Now, let's say these sentient plant-like beings were actually upset. They did actually see these plants as brethren, and they were upset by us uh, eating them and eating their <laughs> reproductive organs. <laughs> what does that matter? It, it, like, unless they're going to take us out because of it. I mean, that's an issue. But just because another being is upset by something doesn't mean they're right. It, like, it doesn't mean they would be right. They would be wrong to be upset. Plants here are not sentient. They do not feel pain. It is not at all the same as humans eating cows. They go by the produce aisle at Whole Foods, and or any large grocery store would have this, and then they see what people are especially buying. Right, there, there's a there's a bit of infanticide going yeah, on. Exactly. Infa why? Well, because the people are seeking out baby spinach, <laughs> the baby versions of everything, and the bean sprouts. Is he lying? Is is this a joke? You know, I don't want to accuse someone of lying because that's not good. In this case, it's almost better than truly believing what he's saying because what he's saying is the dumbest response to vegetarianism, veganism, speciesism, animal welfare. No one takes that seriously. Ba that baby spinach would be infanticide. 
the only reason anyone takes that seriously is because it makes them feel better about their dietary choices. Or they'd end up in a salad because <laughs> hopefully they didn't, hopefully they didn't land next to these vegetarians. I know they're trying to joke, but like they clearly don't understand sentience. So I feel like I need to be clear here that no, vegetarians would not eat them. <laughs> that's, that's the point. The whole thing is not that we eat plants and that's that's our thing. We avoid eating sentient creatures. If there were some sort of plant-like being that was also sentient, no, we would not eat them. We can ask the question, who do you think nature cares more about? Right. The tree that's, that right. might live a thousand years or a hundred years? Right. Or the one ounce mouse that you just saved from getting its nap, its neck snapped. Well, nature is not a being. Like there's no Mother Earth, so I don't think nature cares. I don't think there is a nature that can care. Now I don't care what you think after all of this. I mean, I do. I care in the sense that I'm an educator, and I want you to be fully informed. <laughs> if you're going to run around choosing one species over another, look at the big picture first, and then go pick and choose what you want to eat and what you don't want to eat and what you want to kill. Yeah. It's offensive, honestly. Like, as if we're not doing that. Yes, there are some vegans and vegetarians making silly choices, being really upset about silly things that don't really matter, or being really upset by some uh, vegans choosing to eat oysters. I personally don't see any problem with that because they are very, very, very likely not sentient. There are some other creatures too, I think you can argue are very, very, very likely not sentient. This idea that we're all just like, oh, we just don't want to kill animals. And you know, that's it. I'm just going to save the mouse. The hell? Kids. And like, we're not thinking it through or that there aren't philosophers who have thought very, very, very deeply about these issues. It's offensive. Like all we have to do is go, oh, right. If there were a plant-like being, they would clearly feel aligned to the plants here that aren't sentient. And so we should just kill whatever animals we want. Like, what is even the point there? <laughs> is it just that none of it matters, right? Is it just that we're all inconsistent and none of it matters? Like, that's that's the vibe I get from his videos, which is shitty. I mean, I appreciate that he said, yes, there are environmental reasons, you know, to eat less meat. Because, of course, meat eaters are much more costly to the environment than plant eaters. From an ethical standpoint, I really just get like a none of it matters. Or just say, we're, all is one, everything's important. Very similar to the more like Mother Earth type people, right? We're all, we're all one. What does that mean? How does that, what do you do? <laughs> what do you do to like acknowledge or uh, support the, the oneness? Oh, nothing? Okay. I can see the appeal of this philosophy. You know, I'm, I get it. A lot of it has to do with consciousness and a lot of it has to do with, um, how people feel of philosophy. I love it's the comedian who says that. Like, that's just, it's beautiful. I, I get the sense that he maybe thinks Neil's argument is a little bit goofy, but of course, he's not going to say that. Who's going to say that to mm -hmm. Neil deGrasse Tyson? I really would love to know if it would be possible for a photosynthesizing uh, sentient alien, you know, creature to exist. I'm sure there are some of you watching who know a lot more than I do about uh, this possibility. <laughs> Again, it doesn't change anything because fractal wrongness, there's, there's so much more beyond that that is wrong about his argument, even if these beings existed. It has no bearing on the rightness or wrongness of eating sentient animals. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please leave a like. Subscribe, of course, if you want to see stuff from me. Please click the bell so you can get notifications when I do upload a new video. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much to all of my patrons at patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan and here on YouTube as well. I do post exclusive videos for TV number two and above. So $5 on Patreon. I think on here it's like $6.99. YouTube takes a lot more. A ridiculous, a ridiculous amount, honestly. Um, but also Patreon, I'm grandfathered into their original, which is much lower than if you like just join Patreon now, because I was a, a founding member. 
pretty cool. Anyway, I post two exclusive videos. One is a vlog and then one is a controversial topic that's unrelated to veganism. The one I did for October is on teacher salary. Very uh, trendy right now, given the teacher strike here in Portland, Oregon. That's it for me, guys. Thanks for watching. New video soon.